Oh, today's question's another one about Man of Steel. To a degree, the glorification of might is an issue that is baked into the superhero narrative. It's not unavoidable, but it is very much the default, because at the core, superhero movies are about characters who are, diegetically, more than ordinary. They are exceptional in inaccessible ways that set them apart from the reader or viewer. No matter how many times you cut Spider-Man together with the baking soda of great power, great responsibility, and Mary Jane getting kidnapped, at the end of the day, he's still Spider-Man. Now, there's nothing intrinsically wrong with idealization fantasy. Ideals help us contextualize ourselves and who we want to be, but a work that gets caught up in that, a medium that gets caught up in that, risks losing track of the grounding elements that make ideals relevant and not merely pornographic wankery. As an example of how this can work, let's go back to Spider-Man, just in case it seems like we're beating up on the kid a little too much. Many of the writers have attempted to use his exceptional nature as a fable of sorts. Painting a world where being special doesn't solve all of your problems, which turns a subtle, critical lens on the core power fantasy. Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2 is a great example of this, as Peter still needs to work and eat and sleep and go to class. But... As a counterpoint to the exact same argument, Spider-Man's moral, with great power comes great responsibility, can just as well be seen as buying into the broader superhero narrative of might as a right to rule, where the natural order is for the exceptional, or those with great power, to take care of all of the problems because the masses are incompetent or powerless. See, there's a really fine line between the strong should care for the weak and the strong should rule the weak. And superheroes add an extra dimension by drawing a really obvious line between the strong and the weak. If you have superpowers, you are strong. If you do not, you are weak. This takes on a disturbing element when you consider how many superheroes have a superpower that essentially amounts to opulent wealth or a wealthy benefactor. Batman, Ant-Man, Iron Man, Green Arrow, Iron Fist. And how many real people believe that wealth is strength and strength is the right to rule. So thanks, it's a great question. I love to talk about the ethics and morality of superheroes. It's nice because they're fake. No one really has laser vision. So it's a disarmed, slightly distant sort of way to discuss real world problems. Power, how we relate to it in a broad metaphorical sense. I mean, that's the strength of stories. And you can let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, if you've got a question, you could submit it through Ask FM or contact me on Twitter. Now go in peace, my children. In the name of like, share, and subscribe. Amen.